So now we're going to talk about predicates. A predicate is a sentence that contains a finite number of variables. that becomes a statement when specific values are substituted for the variables. So an example of a predicate would be something like x squared is greater than x. This isn't a cent, uh, this isn't a statement because it's not true or false. It could be either. But when I plug in for x, for my variable x, it will become a statement. It will be either true or false, one or the other. So then once we talked about predicates, we talked about the truth set of a predicate so let's look at an example let's say qn is the predicate n is a factor of 15 when you're talking about predicates you need a domain which is your set of possible inputs for your variable. So here, if the domain is the set of all positive integers, which I believe we denoted with a Z plus, what is our truth set? Which positive integers are factors of 15? 1, 3, 5, and 15. Now, if you change your domain, that's going to potentially change your truth set for your predicate. So if instead, if the domain is the set of all integers, The truth set. Well, now we have negative numbers, so I still have my same four from before, but I now have negative one, negative three, negative five, and negative fifteen. Those all divide fifteen. So after we had predicates, we can then talk about quantifiers. So we had two. Remember, we had the universal quantifier, which we denote with this kind of like upside down A. And we have the existential quantifier, which is this uh, back sideways E. And then when we wanted to negate um, statements that had quantifiers in them, so let's remember how that goes, negate. So when I negate a universal for all x and d qx, remember it's kind of like the and and ors, you flip the quantifier so it becomes existential, there exists an X and D. Anytime you use existential, you say such that, not QX. And what happens when we negate an existential? It's going to flip to become a universal. So when I negate this existential here, what am I going to get for all X and D? And then negate, not QX. So let's negate some. Let's look at a couple examples. So negate 
a statement for all integers n, n is even or n is odd. So what would the negation be? Well, there's our universal, so it becomes existential. There is an integer, or an integer n such that. And now you need to negate this compound statement with an or. Remember when you negate it, it becomes an and. So n, n is not even and n is not odd. Let's do another negation example. Negate. Uh, there is a real number x such that x is irrational. So there is means you have the existential quantifier. So then you're going to negate it. It's going to become the universal. So the ne negation should be all real numbers. And then the opposite of negate x, all real numbers, say x, x are rational. So then remember that we had universal conditional statements. I'm just going to remind you how to negate these. So when you negate, for all, it's a combination of a universal, but then conditional with predicates now. So you negate it just like you did before when, with the quantifier. So it becomes, there exists an X such that. And then how do we negate conditional statements? Remember, there shouldn't be an if then anymore it's not conditional you change it to an and statement you leave the first one alone and negate the second one so remember with these universal conditional statements you can write the contrapositive the converse and the inverse as well just like we did for regular conditional statements